Right now, the National Hurricane Center is forecasting that three tropical disturbances could have the possibility of developing. We, of course, have Invest 95L bringing a high amount of convective activity over the Caribbean islands. And we also have another low pressure system that could develop into a tropical storm and bring impacts to the United States. However, potentially the most concerning tropical disturbance is coming off the West African coast right now, where, as of right now, the GFS model is forecasting a hurricane to develop in the more long term future, but the forecast is still far from certain especially with the european model disagreeing with the gfs model at this time so we're go just gonna need to wait and see but based on the overall composition of these three disturbances we do have see a lot of convective activity around invest 95l but it's dealing with a strong amount of wind shear so it's less likely to develop and same goes for this low pressure system right here the convective activity is expected to increase once this approaches the united states but it seems like the upper level winds coming from the southwest are might be a little bit too strong for this to develop a well-defined and closed center of circulation so that's going to be something we're going to need to keep in mind but for this disturbance it will struggle initially because of course the thunderstorm activity is very spread out right now there isn't really a lot of convection going on however it could encounter an area where there could be just enough moisture to the point where we will see a large amount of lift there's going to be a, a decent amount of moisture coming behind the storm system that could help fuel it however the european model is expecting a little bit more dry air and we see a decent amount of dry air right here so we're gonna need to pay close attention to the, the, um, these few factors over the next several days Here's a global. Here's a look at the global tropics hazards outlook, and we do see that going into the week of August second to August eighth, the um, Climate Prediction Center is forecasting that there should be a tropical cyclone in this area, just off the United States coast. It could move anywhere within this area. It depends how much ridging there is. We could potentially see this move closer to the United States, or maybe go out to sea, which would definitely be the best case scenario. Of course, it's a long-term forecast, so it's still a very difficult to iron out where exactly it'll go and how strong it'll be by the time this approaches this area so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to how the computer models shift their forecast when it comes to this next tropical wave coming off the west african coast so the big difference when taking a look at the seven day graphical tropical weather outlook is that the National Hurricane Center is now listing this area as having a possibility of tropical cyclone formation. Right now, the chance is low, hovering around 20%, but I wouldn't be surprised that within the next several days, once the storm actually approaches the Caribbean and the forecast time frame becomes a lot shorter, we could see that chance increase depending on if the GFS or the European model is correct. The amount of stable air that will move over this area will be key and how quickly it organizes over the main development region. And as for the other two disturbances, a chance is very low at this time, only a 10% chance as it's definitely going to need to find an area where the wind shear will be very light, but it's unlikely to do that. So here's a quick look at what the GFS model is forecasting at this time when it comes to relative humidity in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. We do see that while there is plenty of convection going on around this uh, center circulation, the wind shear is just going to be too strong. Let me show you guys a wind shear map real quick and we do see that there's a strong upper level low located just the north of cuba and a strong upper level high located right over the gulf of mexico and that's suddenly going to bring a very strong amount of wind shear over the caribbean so although there's a lot of convection it's just going to disorganize the storm and the wind and the strong upper level winds will diverge a lot of the air molecules from converging around the center of circulation so we aren't really going to see this storm um we're going to see this storm become very lopsided at a point where the energy will be very spread out and the heat engine around this storm won't be very efficient to support for a lot of convection so as a result we're less likely to see the storm develop and same goes for this low pressure system right here we see that the wind shear does not die down there is uh there is a small upper level low located just to the north of this storm system and we're but we're seeing strong northerly upper level winds and this storm is trying to move at, um to um towards the north so the wind shear is definitely much stronger and it's unlikely to develop thanks to how strong this wind shear is but you still should expect heavy rain over the coast of the southeast um as we see in the relative humidity map we do see that um, the moisture eventually approaches um, the southeast coast. Um, 
and we do see very heavy rainfall right around the friday to saturday time frame for much of florida i wouldn't be surprised if you guys experience flash flooding and even moving to the caribbean with invest 95l there's plenty of rain and i'll say the worst of the rain will be um later today um and into tomorrow for puerto rico and approaching the dominican republic right around thursday to, um and haiti um around that time frame as well where you could expect anywhere from one to three inches so and of course in the higher elevations of these islands you could see the potential of flash flooding um with some of these smaller thunderstorm clusters so you definitely want to be aware of that if you live in a very flood prone area and same goes for for Jamaica but moving on to our next tropical disturbance which has me a little bit more concerned today is due to the fact that the GFS model not only wants to strengthen this into a tropical storm as early as early next week right around the Monday time frame but we see this become a monster of a storm with its pressure dropping down to the 950s just the north of the Caribbean islands and it would this will definitely be a category three at this point and the reason why is because we do see there's plenty of moisture surrounding this storm system and there isn't a lot of dry air that would slow this storm down unlike the European model where the European model is expecting a lot more dry air just to the west of this storm um, and the amount of dry air will really all depend on um, how much of this moisture will move northward because that will certainly be key um, we're not sure um, if there's going to be as much convection as the GFS model is forecasting that really all depends on how much this moisture is able to move northward the european model is expecting a stronger amount of easterly winds which would bring a lot of saharan dust over this area for a more stable environment and it would fizzle this storm out but the gfs model is disagreeing it doesn't expect the um lower level winds to be as strong from the east and that allows the storm to have an open area to intensify and though and while there is a decent um sh decently strong upper level winds just the outside of the center circulation the center circulation is in, embedded in a small area where the wind shear is relatively light and outside of this storm the outflow would definitely increase let me show you guys the forecasted wind shear map right now we do see that there are strong upper level winds surrounding the center circulation however the upper level winds could help this storm because it'll improve the outflow and ventilation of this storm in the upper levels which means that there's going to be less air molecules in the upper levels so more air molecules could rise and of course with a higher amount of rising motion along the surface that would lower the pressure and increase the wind speed for this storm to be much stronger and increase the amount of convection in general to be much stronger so although there is de a decently strong amount of wind shear over this storm it's actually helping this storm when it comes to outflow so that would definitely be the worst case scenario but we also need to keep in mind this forecast is relatively far out um but even if we were to go to a more manageable forecast time frame such as within the next five to six days this the gfs model still is forecasting a strengthening tropical storm at this point so it isn't so far out to where you could just say it's a guess the gfs model is at least detecting that maybe there could be that possibility of tropical storm development if the, there is enough moisture so this is definitely something to be aware of potentially for the creation Caribbean and maybe the United States in the more long-term future still a little bit too far to say but we're just gonna have to wait and see and of course the track will play a big role depending on um depending on how far south this um trough dips i'll determine how far north this will move it if it dips a little less and we see a little bit more ridging and of course you should expect a more south or track which would definitely be a worst case scenario for the caribbean islands which it'll directly impact you guys thankfully the gfs model is expecting the ridging to be just weak enough to move just north of the caribbean islands but this still potentially could impact the united states in the very long-term future but still very far out to say for certain let me show you guys um, what the gfs model is forecasting when it comes to height anomaly we do see that while this chop moves through the southern portion of canada the ridging is still too strong um so it doesn't really necessarily move out to sea but there is just enough of weakness and ridging to where it does take a slight shift further northward which would avoid the caribbean islands which would definitely be the best case scenario and comes in completely close to the united states but it's a guess at this point definitely don't at all 
take this with certainty in the United States or seriously in the United States, but something to be aware of in the more long-term future. I'll keep you guys updated once we see, get more updates, but it really all depends on how much dry air will be located just the north of the Caribbean islands. In terms of what the European model is stating, the European model, at least for these first two potential tropical cyclones, is forecasting a very similar fate. It seems like the wind shear will be too strong for both of these tropical disturbances to have a high chance of developing, but still expect heavy rain anywhere from one to three inches or potentially more in some localized areas over the Caribbean, as well as portions of Florida as we approach the weekend. But into this disturbance, we do see that the dry air is just a little bit too much. And the reason why is because the European model doesn't expect the, the moisture to be as broad. It doesn't expect um, this area of moisture to move northward enough to uh, mitigate the amount of stable air that we're seeing and moisten up the air mass right over this area so as a result it just sort of struggles in the um right in the midst of dry air and we see a strong amount of easterly winds out it's continuing to bring the dry air and we do see that this trough dips down deep far south enough to where it moves out to sea and that would certainly be the best case scenario since not only would this upper level not only would this trough dipping down would steer this away from land but it'll enhance the wind shear to a point where it'll be difficult for this blob of moisture to organize once it really gets caught up in this dip in the jet stream so definitely something to pay close attention to we also we definitely need to be aware that the gfs model does um typically a, a lot more than the european model takes fantasy type storms um where they grow into just massive um, into massive entities a lot more quickly than they should so this could be another one of the biases of the gfs model but at the same time we can't completely disregard the gfs model either it's still a very reliable model so the uh, so we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the amount of stable air right over this area so here are what the um, ensemble members are stating at this time. We do have a decent amount of ensemble members wanting to strengthen this storm quite a bit to nearly or slightly above hurricane status from the GFS model scenario. However, I take it with a grain of salt. Um, it doesn't seem like the ensemble members are updated based on the latest information. We're going to need to wait and see um, depending on how far south this um, trough dips to determine the exact track and strength of this storm. So take the ensemble members at least for right now with a grain of salt but at least for these next two tropical services it does seem like any ensemble members want to develop it into a tropical um cyclone which would certainly be good news and i'd take it with more um validity at least for these two disturbances because they're a lot more in the short term future than this um tropical wave right here so take it with a little bit more of a grain of salt and this is what the European model ensemble um, members are forecasting when it comes to the future trajectory and strength of this storm system. We do see that a lot of these storm, um, the European model is expecting this to move straight northward, which is um, very similar to what the current um, um, European model is saying, at least the main, um, at least the main model. So um that this would certainly be the best case scenario of course still um too far to say for certain if this will occur depends on the amount of dry air how far south this chop dips um and we're just gonna need to wait and see so for the caribbean and southeast coast you definitely need to pay close attention to this so here's my overall forecast when it comes to these next three tropical disturbances. So for the potential of Invest 95L of developing and this whole pressure system, the chance seems low. I wouldn't rule it out completely. There is expected to be a decent amount of convection for both of these storms. It's just that the wind shear is just too strong. Um, but for the potential of this tropical storm or potential hurricane of developing, there's still um, time to really iron out the forecast. So definitely pay close attention to um, further updates. The GFS model wants to take a hurricane thanks to less dry air, while the European model wants to take more of a, a pretty much not strength this, strengthening this into a tropical storm at all. So there's still a pretty big gap when it comes to the forecast. So still very far out to say, but I'll keep you guys updated once we get more, um, once we get more forecast updates from the computer models. But that's it for now, guys. And I thank you guys for watching.